Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, yes. Sweet. last night trying to trying to do some stuff in KVM and it's a mess um, okay <clears throat> all right how have you guys been anybody got anything interesting going on yep Yeah, same here. Like, I had my project presentation in two weeks. Oh, yeah. So I was also working on that. <laughs> yeah, that'll Surprisingly, do. Surprisingly, it turned out well. That's good. All right, great job. Uh, yeah, like I thought it was going to work. So, but like two, three days ago, like we made a breakthrough. Then like we had to do all the growth, the graphs, everything from scratch in three days. Oh, shit. Like, it was a one and a half month project. Oh, my then God. we had to do the whole thing in like three, four days. Oh, so, my so, God. But yeah, we are in a good place. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's good. I mean, that's great. You got it done. Um, yeah. Is it still? You still have payment. a couple days till it's done, or? Uh, yeah, I fin actually finished the presentation today. Like I wanted to get it done as soon as possible. Oh, nice. Nice. So the presentation is day after tomorrow. Good stuff. All right. Well, good luck with the presentation. Let's see. Why view all six? You had a deadline right uh, today. I guess you were also pretty busy this week. Had what? Like, I, uh, you said that you also had a deadline, so I guess you were also oh, busy this yeah, week. Oh, yeah, basically, I just, I was up late last night trying to figure out this thing, but, um, and my, I told my boss I was going to have it done by today, and, uh, I have a meeting with her at 11, and, well, I, I'm I'm s currently stumped by it. Um, it has to do with nested virtualization in this thing that I'm working on. That's like a virtualization-based security feature, and it's very confusing. And I don't know what's going on. But I mean, I kind of know what's going on. But like, the, it's a mess. And then you're on two levels of VMs, which is actually one level of VMs, but it pretends to be multiple levels and it's like i don't know i'm confused right now but we'll see um hopefully i'll be able to figure it out sometimes it looks like oh this isn't even going to be possible and sometimes it looks like it is and i've been like working on it in some way or another since like october end of october so it's like cool. it's a bit of a mess That's yeah nice. i really need to finish it up because like yeah i just i have too many projects going but oh my gosh yeah <laughs> Himanshu, did you do this? Uh, yeah, so... Awesome. So I did, but... Uh, I have one problem there. Uh, what to do when we are not using the simple mode? Uh, because uh, where do I connect? Oh, yeah. Should I make a different block? Or uh, should I just do a connection somewhere? Um, I wanted to know that. Let's see. So yeah, you got simple. Um, well, I would connect valid to... Oh, yeah. There's no other... We're not listing the conditions, are we? <laughs> now I see. Um, I guess I would say, hmm, what's the best way to do this? Um, hmm. Maybe, uh, in the, um, the, let's see. So the, um, the squiggly braces operator, um, in mermaid JS, uh, lets us, or gives us a diamond, um, a diamond, whatever, diamond shape. Um, uh, that might be too big. 
Oh no, it'll probably be fine. I'm just thinking we could put like a diamond shape condition conditions or something in this box here, right? Like if we had a little, if we had like a diamond shape right here that said conditions and then valid went into conditions and then conditions went into clone repo, um, that might, because usually those diamond shapes are used as like an if statement. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's like in flowchart, right? Yeah. I don't know. Does that sound like a good idea to everybody? Or is there a better way? Because that yeah, may not flowcharts look we quite use right. that only. Okay. All right. Let's do that then. Um, so I would just say, yeah. So if a thing, if, if an operation has conditions, then put that little conditions statement there. Um, so let's see. All right, great. This is, I'm excited to see this happen. Um, cause I remember there was one time Ogden and I were doing something and I was like, Oh, well we can just visualize it. And then I was like, Oh, we can't just visualize it cause it doesn't make any sense. I think it was the, uh, I think it was the DB stuff or something. I can't remember. Or maybe it's that. Um, yeah, that yeah. Yep. Um, okay. Oh, oops. All right. Great. Hey, thanks for picking this up. I want you, uh, let's see. Yeah. So, and, uh, conditions. Uh, so, so, for not simple mode, um, if an operation has conditions, um, operation has conditions uh, add a conditions um, uh, to the subgraph be nice if we could have this like event we should probably make a plugin system for this eventually so that you could like output in different formats um, have I mentioned that I love plugins? Uh, let's see. Let's see. To the subgraph, operation has conditions. Uh, link. Oh, conditions for that. All right. Cool. So. Okay. So let me put this in the notes. Talked about um, diagram condition linking. Um, I want to start putting people's names on things. Uh, let's see. Okay, let's see. Um, and then. All my windows went away. Okay, there we go. Uh, this is supposed to be here. Okay. Uh, moved IO usage. Nice. Data flows index. Yeah, I made an issue for this also. Sweet. I oh, thank you. I opened up here. Perfect. Perfect. Um, Okay. Oh, and this is something I've been meaning to go over. Um, but so I've noticed everyone's gotten better about their their pull request titles with regards to. Okay, so this is it's it's just like a formatting thing, but it's helpful when you're looking through the Git log. Um, so let's see. Sorry to pick on you, Hamachu, but everyone's doing this, so this is just a good example. Um, yeah, yeah, no problem. Um, where is... Aha, okay. So, um, so everybody started to do a good job of this um, in their pull request titles, but I noticed that the commit the titles of the commits are still not quite doing that. And also, I've also noticed that, that mostly everyone is also not capitalizing the first word, um, which it doesn't really matter, but, you know, it's nice to have everything be consistent. Um, so 
this is perfect, the body there. Um, because basically, so so the ideal situation here is that I can come and I can just hit rebase and merge, right? Um, so as if you're committing to master, right? So you, so if you're thinking about like what what does my commit message look like, and does it look like the commit message is on master? Um, so for example, um, so they usually. Well, this one, I guess I just merged without the thing because it was close enough. Um, and I wanted to give Sudhanshu points for for uh, for formatting his pull request almost exactly the way we're talking about. So, um, so yeah, so the capitalization here. But, um, so yeah, basically, the, the way the way that everybody's titling their form their pull request titles, if we can title our commits that way and then do fixes and then colon and then the issue number with the with the the pound sign and uh, then like this one so blank and then there's a blank line here let me show you guys and get um, all right so yeah so it's always it's title blank line fixes and then signed off by um, signed off by doesn't really matter um, but I've been adding it um, let's see yeah like this guy has got um, this guy's, well, he's, he's from Linux, so he, basically, this is sort of like a, this, you see this style in a lot of, like, larger projects, and since we're getting larger and larger, then we want to keep this style. Um, but basically, the idea is that if, okay, so, I'm going to make, I'm going to make a thing about this pretty soon, um, but there's this whole, um, there's this whole, actually, where is that link? Um, this might be helpful. Um, you guys don't have to care too much about this, but if you can title the pull request, that's helpful. Um, just because it's mostly helpful. It's helpful. For, it's I, I can change it no problem, but basically it's like from a, a mentoring's perspective, this is... This is something good for you guys to learn. Um, because, let's see, where is it? Um, so the Linux kernel is a prime example of this because they're a huge community. Um, where is the... I'll just post this out. So. Uh, da, 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 okay. Um, match formatting and change logs. Okay. Um, okay. So this is a bit, it's a bit overkill for what we're doing. Um, but you'll notice that, that I've been trying to do this and, and we usually like, it's a good thing to try to do. Um, most of the time, like a single pull request will fall into this, um, sort of like paradigm. Um, but sometimes it doesn't um in which case then this is the kind of things that long term we should be thinking about when you're working with git and stuff um but basically i'm going to send this out um or well i'll put it in the meeting minutes um okay so so that's a lot of hand waving and not a lot of explaining um so the idea here is that um if we have a pull request um let's see Actually, let me take. Hmm, I'll use this project. So let's see. What's a good example? Um, let's see. What's a good example? And maybe we can find a bad example too. Okay. Um, okay. For example. Um, this is like this is one pull request, um, but there's three separate commits, and let's see. All right, so this is what it looks like when you when you apply each commit one by one, right? 
we apply or wait which one is it yeah this is the first one so like if you're thinking about your commits as like a series of you, you want to think about like you want to think about your pull request and then you want to think about okay what are all the things like that what were all the changes in this pull request right so maybe this one is not a good example because there's too many things happening here. God damn it. Um, you want to think about, like, okay, I... Where's a good example? Sorry. I want to make sure we find a good example. Did I think I split this one up, actually? Yes, I did split this one up. Okay, great. Um, yeah, you guys might have noticed that I've done this sometimes. Uh, all right, so... Um, we had this pull request, right? And it added the pre-processing source, right? So Saksham wrote this. Um, so if we look at the whole thing, Saksham had written this um, associate definition output operation, and then he'd written all of this data flow source. Um, and then he wrote the test cases and, you know, for each one, right? Um, and then we also had this change that, that, um, introduce the new um, the new syntax for um, for for getting definitions. If you're grabbing definitions from a specific origin, then um, you're going to uh, you, you you can list which definitions in that origin are allowed for the single input, right? So we had th there's basically three separate changes in here, right? But it all shows as one pull request, and usually we just merge things as one pull request. Um, Actually, I'll just, I, I'll, what I'll do is I will take, um, okay, so we'll make a demo video. So I will make a demo video, so I'll show you what it is, and then I'll, I'll make a demo video so that, that this makes more sense um, of how we split into multiple um, and I'm not going to ask you guys I might not ask you guys to do this by the end of the summer I might start asking you to do this because it's good good practice um, like the Linux kernel does this heavily the TPM2 software project does this heavily like projects with like large communities that really st stick to their standards um, they 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 will require you to do this. So it's a good thing to like practice and know how to do. Um, and uh, so, yeah, okay. So I'll make a video of showing how this works. But basically, you know, the, the thing is that we're taking this, this one consolidated um, patch, right? And we're going to split it into multiple logical patches. And well, the way we split it has, we're, we're trying to think about it as if I applied one patch and then I applied the next patch and then I applied the next patch after each application of a patch, the CI would still pass or all the tests would still pass, right? So for this one, the, um, the, logical, um, the logical way to split this up was First, we add this operation because this operation doesn't depend on the any of the other changes, right? So we take that and we make that the first commit, right? And then we add the ability to override the definitions um, because we're going to need that for the data flow preprocessing stuff. So we know that it's, it's, this is a nice example because there's three of them. Um, so one of them is unrelated. We take the next one. Uh, or we take the rest of the changes and we say, okay, what, what part of these changes like is dependent on other parts of these changes? And then the ones that are, you know, the changes that are dependent on other changes, they go last, right? And then you just keep repeating that process until you have a series of commits where, you know, you can apply each one cleanly, cleanly being all the tests pass um, and without, you know, build errors or whatever. Um, and you end up with this nice um, log of what all the changes were. And the reason we do that is because I don't know if you guys do this much, um, but I find this to be extremely helpful when I say, what the fuck happened? Um, I do git log dash p, um, and you can see exactly um, 
what happened. Um, like it, well, it just lists all the changes with all the, it's, 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 this is just going through each commit one by one. Um, whereas like Git, GitHub doesn't have a great interface to do this because you have to click in each commit. Um, the command line client of Git does. And when this really, really, really is helpful is when you're like, what the hell happened to this file? Um, cause you can do git log dash P dash dash. And then like, for example, we can do operation output and we can say, okay, what the hell was going on in here? Right. Since the beginning of time. Well, okay. So, you know, it looks like we added some, um, we added some, the initial operations, um, we added, uh, some context management and then we, uh, Oh, we switched everything to that standardized pattern way long ago, and then we started adding more operations. We changed some stuff. Uh, we formatted things with black. Um, and so you can see for one given file, if you're like, what what happened? Things aren't working the way that I thought they were. Um, you can start, You it, it gives you better visibility into what, what, what the bug is, um, because you can look at the log of the code and it's, um, structured in, in the right way, right? Because if we had committed all of this stuff under one single giant commit, um, then we might not understand why these changes, right? So if I, if I had just committed all of this, if I had, if there was a bug in associate definition, and we committed the whole thing as data flow based, based pre-processing source, then when I'm looking through the log here, I'm going to say, you know, I'm going to see a commit that says, oh, damn it. Um, I'm going to see this commit and it would have instead said, you know, data flow based pre-processing source. And I'd be looking at it going, well, what the fuck happened? You know, wait a minute. That's, this isn't, does this have to do with the data flow pre-processing sources? It does it not. And in reality, it's really a separate thing, right? So we want to make it a separate change. And then that helps us debug when we find problems. Um, so sorry, this was, wow, that was a very long-winded explanation, but this is important. So, um, well, what, what, you guys know I've got some long-winded explanations, but okay. So anyways, um, I'll make a video about that. Um, and I have a bunch of videos that I need to make, don't I? But that one I'll do soon. Um, so, okay. Um, yeah, great job making an issue too. Anyway, so basically if you do that, if you split things up, great. Um, but beyond splitting things, so splitting things up is something that I'll probably ask you guys to do like later because, you know, it takes some time to start, take some time to start thinking about is thinking about it this way and then um but for now if we can format the titles um the same way um then basically when we get to the point where we're doing that i can just hit this rebase and merge button and everything goes through and applies uh cleanly and we end up with this beautiful git log that we can all um, read and understand very easily um anyways so Good stuff. Yeah, I think this was much needed. Uh, all right, cool. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad that was that was interesting. Cause yeah, so yeah, I mean, this is something that you're gonna see like a lot. Um, so as as you go through your careers, so it's uh, it's a good thing to to get some practice on. Uh, awesome, great job. Uh, let's see. All right, great. Um, and let's see. Oh, I don't. Do we have Sudhancho? Oh, we did not have Sudhancho. Okay. No, it looks like. Right, well, if we don't have Sudhancho, then I will go over this later. Um, so, and then let me so, talk about patch preparation. Okay. Um, merged moving data flow IO to data flows tutorial. Um, nice. Okay. And then 
sweet example usage. Okay, um, let's actually not add this because um, since Vopal Rabbit models got added within this um, within this pass change, then oh, we don't need to say that they also got example usage. Um, oh no, we lost Hamachu. Uh, let's see. All right, sweet, and you did it so that they could be tested. Awesome. Okay. Uh, what's going on here? Oh, wait. Yeah, we lost him, aren't you? That's what I just said. Um, all right. Well, I guess we'll find out what's going on there later. Okay, so, hey, is this ready to go, Saksham? Uh, yeah, I think it's ready to go. Sweet. Uh, you can review it the last time if you want. Okay. I mean... I think I looked at it yesterday, so let's see. This is what's new. Um, oh wait, we this is just this is I looked at it once you did that, so yeah, okay, we're good. Um, this is I was wait a minute, what, why was I confused? Um, did I make a comment on here about anything? Oh yeah, you left. Oh a yeah. Comment. Uh, so they get converted to double dash arguments and command. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. Oh, so you basically just, oh, you added some, I think I missed that. You added some logic to say if it's prefixed with underscore, then it gets double dash. Yes. All right. Have you guys played that Mario Kart? Mario Kart Double Dash. Right, let's see. Um, okay, nice. Uh, this is really exciting. Uh, let's see. So, yeah, let's just make them single dash. Um, I think we'll just do single dash everywhere. I mean, single dash, so... Yeah. Ha. I see. All right. Um Yeah, let's just make them single dash. I don't think there's anything actively testing those right now anyways, so that should be a quick change. Um so let's say Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. So. Okay, so. Alright, yeah, um, now I can't find them. But yeah, if you could just make those single dash, then. What was it? Uh, yeah, there we go. Yeah. Good job trying to preserve the existing behavior, though. It's always good. It's always the right thing to do on the first first go around. Um, okay, so and then let me just make a note here. Okay. Um, did we go through all the notifications? Okay. Uh, okay. CV event tool. Okay. So. Just one minor change needed, and then oh, and I think you needed to rebase um, because we just merged something that changed the change lock. So, or you need to merge master or whatever. Right, just one minor change needed, then we'll merge. All right. Um, plus merge master and update change lock. Okay. Um, is there anything else on your end, um, Sakshan? Uh, yeah, you. Uh, we talked about the MNIST normalization of uh, adding a config loadable to the data flow. 
and then doing the config loading stuff in base.py. Oh yeah, that's right. So you're going to do yeah, basically if you see if you see a type that says um it can be loaded with a config loader cuz we're going to yeah, say so yeah, the data flow equals blank and then if this is like a data class or something, then we can load it with a config loader. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I was taking a look at that and the issue is with the circular importing. Circular importing? Because base config loader. Uh, oh. From, uh, oh. From base itself. Of course, of course it does. Actually, um, I was looking at importing issues and that's why I was able to solve <laughs> that issue with the unified config. So. Nice. Yeah, the importing issues can get tricky. Okay, well, I mean, I think the solution at this point is probably to split that stuff into util. Um, probably into util config where we put fields. Um, you know, like the MK, like MK arg and um, so def MK arg. Yeah, this stuff, like there's really no reason for this to be in here, you know? Like this is, this could definitely go in util. Um, uh, well, let's see, convert value. Yeah, I feel like this is stuff that we should put into util um, config. Um, so, let's see. Like, uh, and then, I don't, because I don't think any of this stuff is subclass base configurable. Okay, well, that's a bit of an issue. Um, but, that doesn't really matter because we could always just say has at her entry point name. Um, yeah, I think most of the stuff we should just split into, we should take this out of base. Um, because, I mean, if it's not dependent on anything in here, it shouldn't be in here, right? Because that helps us avoid import problems, right? Because I think in this case, what you're going to be looking at is convert value, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. And so if we split that into dfml slash util slash config slash, I don't know, what it, what it, wherever this should go in there, like maybe this is just config.py for now, unless we have a better word name for it, or like field or something. It's probably just config. All of this is just config. Um, yeah. Anyways, it could go in that directory, right? And then uh, that way we can import base, or let's see. That way, well, let's see. See, then it's dependent on config loaders. Well, no, no, see, that doesn't work still. Because base imports this, this tries to import config loaders. Then we end up with a circular dependency. Um, um, Let's see. Uh, how do we avoid this? Um, okay. Hmm. 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 Um. How do we avoid this? Um, uh, hmm. Yeah, this just got tricky. Um, okay, well. Yeah, we need to split it out in some way so that it doesn't become a circular dependency. Um, and I think the way to do that is we have to do like what we were talking about, where we split out, we get rid of the class method methods of args and configs and with config, um, because that's what's creating the circular dependency right now, I believe. Um, let's see. Um, uh, with config. 
Hmm. But the problem was, remember we talked about this last time, the problem is that we have information about the class that gets tied into this. Um, but we could just make these methods take a class. Um, and then the question becomes, how do you get a new instance easily? Um, so yeah, base configurable. Um, okay. Yeah, I don't know. I think we might have to take this. We might want to take this one offline, so let's uh, so we don't take up too much time with this. So um, to get uh, so to make it so that we could. All right, but for now, I mean, as a stopgap. Um, what, what, uh, let's see. Is there a way we can do this? Um, uh, well, okay, so you could just hack this up for now. Um, as horrible as that sounds. Um, because you sh could just take from here and say, or let's see. Uh, last time uh, I gave an idea about uh, doing uh, the config loading stuff in Dataflow source itself. If yeah, if yeah. Good. Yeah, you, you can do it. Yeah, I would say, yeah, exactly. Um, if you get a data flow that's a string, then you use the config loader. Is that what you're saying? Uh, yes. Yeah, just do that. Let's just do that. Um, so, circular dependency issue with the idea of trying to have convert value. Um, Trying to have convert value uh, auto use config loaders to load files um, that contain things like data flows. Um, okay, so work around. We'll have to do this. We want to do this eventually because we're just going to keep running into this type of thing. Um, slash hack um, of uh, just um, import config loaders in data flow source. All right. There we go. Sweet. Uh, all right, does that that solves that then, for now? Oh uh, yeah, yes. Okay, cool. Nice, yeah, good, 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 good workaround. We'll uh, we'll have to find a way to split this out eventually because obviously loading files into data classes is uh, very. I'll try fun. that too. If if I get somewhere, I'll let okay. you know. Okay. Cool. Um, let's see. And then. So Hashim, um, the um, so the issue that we're talking the about, um, this guy, I'm I don't right we don't see don't that remember. in the CI, and we don't see that, um, and we didn't see it one one time. Well, let's see, was it just not as far through on that CI log? Uh, actually, I tried to reinstall Miniconda now locally, uh -huh. and the installation is throwing an error. Weird. So, What's the error? Yeah, I suppose it's uh, something on their side. Okay. Okay, it was something. Okay. So, let's see. So, do you think it's something Miniconda related, were you saying, or is it? Yeah, I think so. 
Okay. Let's. Uh, like you said, the installation is corrupted. Okay. Okay. So and then so what I was going to do about this is that that was my guess. Basically, what I was thinking is that we can have um, our we should have another container image um, like that we have on Docker Hub. Um, we have the one container image, but it's got basically just the built. Um, uh, I was just here. Come on. Uh, so we have this image, but um, let's see what's the Docker file. Yeah, the Docker file is just like the master branch. Um, of just the base repo. So I was thinking we could add probably another tag um, of like dev, and then we basically just throw everything <laughs> that we need um, for development into that container. Um, and then we could also use that for the local CI runs. And that way, you know, if it builds on Docker Hub, hopefully like they have, because I think a lot of times what happens is like, I think, Conda downloads a bunch of things with various different ways of downloading, and maybe some of them time out and it doesn't error check on them, like if there's connection issues, and then it doesn't verify the files after it downloads them all. So I think I think that's why we've sometimes ended up with like corrupted installations, um, and I'm hoping that if we just have it built in the Docker Hub CI, then you know Docker Hubs wherever their servers are is 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 a good enough connection that it'll it'll always give us the right image. Um, but I'm not, I'm not sure of that, but I'm just thinking, you know, that's, that's, if, if we can get an image that works and we put it in Docker hub, then if we just keep pulling down that image, um, then we know that it's not going to be a problem with like that writing to the local cache, right? Because that local cache is kind of dubious anyways. Um, mounting it as a volume and everything means that it's going to change and so what's the point of a container if the stuff in there is actually not we're not sure that that's what we want um so we should probably do that um or we should find some way to verify the conda installation um which would be actually a better solution but i'm not sure if that exists so i guess we could just look for that first um so um still so where are you at with this, where right, are you now? At with this right now i'm sorry so where are you at with this where right now like what what's the what's like the, are you able so first off i guess are you able to run the the model slash dal for pi tests locally like are you able to run those without the <laughs> container or with the container locally uh, I'm having network issues. I can't really hear you. Sorry. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, are you having? Are you are you able to run the model Dal for Pi stuff locally? Uh, no, no. I, I'm not able to. Okay. Um, what's the current uh, the current error there? Is it the same thing? Yeah, it's actually the same error that uh, I posted, uh, the one without the cache. Now that we have the Wowpel uh, Webit issue fixed uh, with the library being downloaded, uh, it still throws the same error. OK. Uh, that lookup error. OK. But is that is that being thrown? So if you run just instead of if you run plugin dot, if you run you know model dal for pi, does that still happen? Uh, let me check.
Oh, this is interesting. So what I'm looking at now is basically, um, right, like it complains when it says Delphi Pi is listed as an as a uh, dependency, but Delphi Pi is only um, available on Anaconda or through Conda, right? Um, and then, so what I'm thinking is maybe yeah. see what we really need is like some way for um, some way for when you do pip install it actually does conda install or maybe I guess we could just run conda install um, does that work? let's find out uh, do I have that in my cache? local uh, cache pip. Um, uh, all right. I feel like that should bring up this. Oh. Uh, oh, yeah, this is something that we need to do. All right, so this is sort of like notice for everyone. Um, I ran into this the other day, and this is important that we fix this. Um, Okay, and this is kind of a big thing that's going to break a bunch of stuff. Um, but so I added the other day. Remember, we talked about this. Um, we talked about um, this, where we would like log an error message, and I realized we should really just raise an exception because um, if you're like, for example, if we do like the TensorFlow uh, models and stuff, like if you say. If you if you try to grab features like if you're trying to grab records from sources um, uh, using the with features method and it gives you no records, you're just going to immediately fail anyways um, because you're not going to have any records to train on, right? Or, or to do accuracy assessment on, or to do uh, prediction on, and so. Um, so I realized we should really just be raising an error. Um, and so I actually hooked into the unit test stuff um, to get it to do the nice little diff. Um, let's see. Um, let's see. Well, um, yeah, so basically if you do that, it'll give you a diff. And what I realized, though, was we um, the current way that, that, that models work is... Um, uh, is that um, predict just takes a bunch of records, but there's no guarantees that those records actually have the features, right? So if you just provide it with some kind of, right, if like there's no guarantees that those records have the right features. So you might get cryptic error messages, um, uh, like for example, from the scikit models, it tries to drop um, the predict like. What does it do? It builds it builds giant um, pandas arrays, I think, or, and or pandas data structures, and then it drops um, the prediction one from the x, and then only keeps the prediction one from the y, or something. Or what happens here? Here it is. Um, let's just look at it. It's right here. Um, yeah, predict. Um, Yeah, so it grabs all the feature data, and then um, self dot features. Okay, well, oh, that's what happens. So if if record dot features returns an empty dict unless the record has all of those features, right? Um, which is why we use sources with features because it'll always give us only record that have all of only records that have all of those features. Um, well, 
since we're not using sources with features, there's no validation here. So if you happen to pass in a source where the records don't have those features, you're just going to end up with a giant cryptic error message. Um, so we really should be passing sources to this. Um, and so, yeah, basically we just need to go through and change every single model so that it accepts um, sources for predict. Basically the predict is going to look pretty much just like every other um, it's, it's going to look like, you know, train and accuracy mostly, right? It's the, it's the signature on that function is going to look pretty damn similar. Um, so this needs to happen. Um, uh, I'm not so sure if we're going to make our next week release deadline here. Um, but um, that's okay. Um, it's better to have things that, that are really working than to have... Um, you know, things that are maybe not fully working. I mean, we can always just throw in another release. Uh, but I think things are kind of... I think we need to get this stuff done. Um, so, all right. Um, Hashim, did you figure that out? Yeah, I'm just downloading some packages, so it's okay. taking some time. Okay. Uh, it was working before, but I just wanted to be sure. Yeah. All right, so if someone wants to do that, that'd be great. Um, just comment on there and pick it up. Um, it shouldn't be too much of a heavy lift. I mean, we don't have a million models. Um, so, and it's really just change the function signature and then change the loop to do sources with features. Um, and then if anywhere is actually passing records into the predict method, which I don't think we have any places doing that, we'll change that. Um, but everything should be pretty much using the high level APIs. Um, and if they aren't, then we can simplify test cases by doing that. So let's just check in like model TensorFlow test, test and see. Okay, so yeah. Um, oh, nope, this one's already using the high-level API. Um, so, model. Let's see. Second test. These ones might not be. Um, oh, but these ones are all derived from the same test case, so that's an easy fix. Um, yeah, okay, so that's an easy fix, because you basically, for, for the ones that aren't, you just delete that, and then that's the fix. Um, so this is should not be such a heavy lift, but it does need to get done. Um, so let's see. And then this one is a pretty heavy lift, but I think Sudarsana is going to do this. All right. Um, so, um, yeah, I guess Hashim on that one, if the... If, if this is working locally, then you can sort of debug these guys locally and we'll just worry about the rest of the tests like when we get there. Um, otherwise, you can always sort of push things up and see what happens. Um, these guys actually, I think, I don't think I got a chance to tell you, but they, the people on that project reached out to me and said, hey, what are you doing? Um, like, what's up? Let's see if we can collaborate on things. Um, and uh, I emailed them back, but I sent them a very long email, so they may not have read the whole thing yet. Um, uh, so yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens there. Um, I basically told them that um, you know you're working on this this plugin. We've got this. We've got a bunch of plugins, um, and uh, you know we've got this command line interface and stuff. So basically, like they can they can expose the work they're doing through all of the the ways that we expose models um and uh you're going to you're you're almost done writing the first one and if they want to come write a bunch of other ones and add to this then well you know we've got a place for them to add their stuff um so we'll see how that cool. goes yeah that would be great if they if they got on the bandwagon so um Sweet. Yeah, so I guess, yeah, it would be good if we just, if you try to just um, pass model Delphi probably locally, and, and if we can just, if we can get your debugging cycle working locally, then, and, and you can, you can get this guy going, um, then, um, then we can probably figure out the rest. Um, like, we'll, we'll, we'll cross the rest of those, those bridges when we get there, if we're still seeing issues. Um, 
after after this one works you know with the with the main models because i don't think you're changing anything in in the main package right so if we're seeing issues there it's probably just wacky stuff um that we'll figure out so all right sweet thanks is there anything else you wanted to talk about no thank you all right cool all right so again yeah how have things going for you? Uh, could you pull up the initial space? Pull up what now? Uh, the uh, initials, initials. Oh, yes. Okay. Because, like, uh, it's using the course inside that and it's just loading and dumping to FT. So, I, did you, I didn't see a straightforward way to reuse that. So. So something's mad at us somewhere. Um, load test from module. Oh god damn it! Are we running a fucking unit test error again? Secrets test from file. Oh, We're missing an init uh, py in here. There we go. All right. Um, okay. So here's what I mean. Uh, secrets. So if we subclass from any source, um, this is basically going to just open, uh, so if we subclass from any source, when we create a file secrets, um, it will, um, it's, sh well, okay, let's see. It's going to get mad because we don't have that stuff in the config, isn't it? Um, let's see what happens. Secrets. Yeah, it might get mad because we don't have that stuff in the config. Um, Okay, so yeah, I guess I see what you're saying. Yeah, so so the thing is, what I was envisioning here was that we would basically just say um, um, from dot dot sources dot memory import memory source content. 
text. Got any? Also, uh, John, like, uh, yeah. are, what are the places where we can use the high level API to import from? To what? The high level API, like from the FML import memory source context. Can we do that? In memory source context, well, yeah, that's 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 something you could do too here, right? So you could say, this is this is that's another thing that I was saying. You could just go, um, um, and usually we return none. So you could do, you could do this kind of thing where you just do uh, record equals await load um, self dot source. Um, name, right? Um, and then let's see what we should do. Um, if you need, is this what you were saying? So you make a source basically. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that's def that's definitely something you could do here too. I was I thought about suggesting that as well, right? Where you just say, you know, load this name, and then you have a feature, and you say record dot feature data, right? Yeah. And then this yeah, is I like that's straightforward. I mean, like, it's definitely easy. So <laughs> yeah, it's it's easy for us, but like I guess if like some point of time later when we read this code. Like we are just saving some password and some key map value and like we have this record and all this stuff. Yeah, well I mean the thing is that this source is this is kinda like I mean this is kinda like you know you you know how we all we always you know we'll make a new plugin type and then we need something within the base package, right? So that we can test the, the implementation of the plugin type, right? And so this file source is not something that people are, you know, they ever should use because they should be using something that's actually secure. Um, but it is something that, that we sort of need for testing, right? Um, and for ease of use. So um, I think that. Um, oh, okay, okay. I, I see. Right? So. Yeah, so it's like this, for the purpose of the, like, just because, or let's see, this would be save, right? It's it's just, it doesn't really matter how we implement it because it's not going to get used very much, right? Yes, yes. Um, so, and, and I think this is definitely, you were right, this is probably the correct, um, this is probably the, the, the path of least resistance here is probably this, right? So data equals features. Um, and then data value, um, and this should give us what we're looking for. Um, of course, you got to go and implement source, um, and this is probably just self dot parent dot config dot source, and then you're probably done. Um, <laughs> so yeah, this is probably the whole thing if you go that route, right? Um, so it's probably a good way to do it. Um, I'll just leave. I'll just leave this, um, or I'll just leave this like this, and then you can you can do the rest here. Does that sound good? Okay. All right. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah. And then you probably just want like, so. or well, it's probably not self dot yeah, parent dot config, right? It's probably just like you create a source on a init in the init method here, and then you do it, right? Yeah. Cool. Um, uh, cool. So that's a that's a better way to do it. Um, I don't know why I was messing with. It. I was like really. I was really set on the idea that I was like, okay, this way we can only open the file one time, and then we close the file when we're done. But who cares? <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's not going to be something that gets used. So, and I am pretty sure that the reading and writing of a file on a thing that's not going to get used is not going to be a performance impact that we need to care about. So, <laughs> all right, great, good, good, good thinking there. So, let's see. Um, 
Well modify well use high level load and save APIs. Um, yeah, you guys gotta get my head out of the out of the weeds sometimes. So let's see, load high level uh, for file secret. Um, okay, and then the other thing was like let's remove the apostrophe. Um, or not the apostrophe, oh, but let's is, uh, remove I the have, pluralization. Yeah, I yeah. Have to remove them in my cool. Reflection. And then, and then, where you had like file this the having it be file underscore secret or whatever it was. Um, let's let's just make it file, right? Like how um, if you look in dffml slash source slash file dot py, this will be dffml slash secret slash file dot py. Um, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, because I think that that's probably just redundant. Um, all right, great. Is there anything Hello, else that you're yeah, after this? Uh, yeah, I have changed the FFmpeg usage, and like, can I just now uh, make like a function and just go into that function? Does that work now? I missed some of what you said there. Uh, like, uh, is the definition created automatically now? Like, if I just have a, a normal Python function in a file, uh, does it work? Oh yeah, so that would be okay. So. Um, and this is something that we should add to the data flows tutorial stuff that we just now have. Um, but I think this silently went in a while ago. Um, oh yeah, so if you look in this file now, and I believe you added this file a while ago, um, but so this is what this file looks like now. Um, and it's checking that uh, it does data flow create and then it does and then it runs the data flow um, and so I've I chopped it up a little bit and I added um, basically I took the one that you had I split out the thing that grabs that creates the data flow um, and then I made another test so we have one that just is a regular operation and then one that is an asynchronous generator operation um, and so uh, Yes, it does work, and here's where the test cases are. Um, so, if you need a reference, um, cool. Uh, what are you, what were you going to do with that? Or are you just you're going to do the FM, FMPEG? FMPEG, yeah. All right, great. That'll be awesome. Yeah, just have yeah, just a single just single function. function. Yeah, awesome, yeah. awesome. That'll be great. And then I guess you won't need. Yeah, you won't even need to define the data flow in that file, right? Because you'll have the you'll you'll yeah. change the create command to modify the input flow. Oh, this would be great. Yeah, now we can just throw Python functions yeah. and files and... Sweet. Yeah, and then, yeah, it's so like you... Abstraction. Exactly. <laughs> this is abstraction <laughs> heaven. <laughs> yeah, you just throw Python functions and files and all of a sudden they're running um, in HTTP servers and getting auto-redeployed. This is great. Um, all right, sweet. Okay, so anything else um, on your front, Aaron? Nothing like I haven't had a chance to do much this. Okay, cool. Yeah, well, you had that presentation, right? So I'm um, going to tackle FFmpeg next. Um, so uh, operations or functions are getting auto op. Uh, okay, and then let me reference that commit to. This is another example of I took all of these and I split them into. Uh, that was one that was, that was the one when I did this was when I was thinking, man, I should really record how I'm doing this splitting one commit into a bunch of commits because all of these I think were the same commit that had to get split. Um, it was oh <laughs> yeah <laughs> right yeah it was a mess. Um, and I'm sorry I'm gonna force force uh, everyone to, to learn how to do this no, eventually. It's but good. It's good. Yeah, you'll you'll like it's it's. It's really nice later when you're going through and you're like, okay, this is actually just like each commit is like a couple lines and it makes a lot of sense. Um, when you're like, what did I do and where's my bug now? All right, sweet. Um, are we good? Uh, John. Uh, yeah. I pushed the commits. Can you like give a demo right now if it's possible if you have time? Um, to 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 merge this. Yes. All right. Cool. Let's see. Let's just wait for the CI to pass here. Okay. 
do, do, do. Okay, let's just clear the files. Nice. Oh, this is going to be great. Okay, um, I want to get to Sudhanshu because um, I think we've gotten everybody else so far. So, how's it going, Sudhanshu? Yeah, so it's going great. How it's going for you? It's been good. Yeah, I've been. Uh, it's been. We've had some beautiful weather here, especially. So I lugged my monitor outside, and I've been sitting outside with my monitor on the in the in the backyard and uh, enjoying the enjoying the 80 degree weather so that's been nice how about what what have you been up to yeah just quarantine quarantine nice. yeah <laughs> that'll do <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah so uh actually i was working on the cleanup stuff yeah. okay sweet so in that uh one of the like in the http deployment thing like one of mm -hmm. the commands was failing okay so in the below, I like I have posted like uh, in the below. Yeah. Let's see. So uh, one, yeah, that one. So that was failing. Missing definition. So I actually okay. figured out like a workaround for it. Mm -hmm. But I don't think like it would be like a great thing. Okay. Like yeah. Oh, so you're saying that this? Oh, this is the workaround. Yes. yes, uh, yes. Oh, okay, right. And that's obviously... Oh, okay. Oh, and you know what? I think the other thing is that since... Great job on this. This was a uh, what we thought was not going to be... Right, I labeled the whole issue as, as medium, and this quickly blew up into a giant um, change set. So great job working on this. Yes. Yeah, this was, uh, this was not for the faint of heart. Um, so, okay. So I think that actually this is a great... Um, this is a great time to use the stuff that Algen added recently with the HTTP channel config. Um, so let's see. Um, I think... Oh, and then we do need to still re-add these SVGs. Um, so let's see. And you might have to add them with git add-f. That might be why they're not going, because I've noticed that I've accidentally deleted things sometimes during that. Um, okay, okay. Oh, oh, and this. Oh, God. Okay, now this is interesting because speaking of that patch that we were just looking at, uh, there should have been a patch in here that that makes it so that um, this, wait, no. Yes, this should be, this should be the patch that fixes this. Um, so basically what this does, oh, and I found this was a dump bug. Um, so what we should have here is that when we auto create the name on these operations, it should check if it was already registered as a given entry point. Um, so I'm wondering if, let me pull this down and let's see what happens here. So. branch name. I don't think I have your origin added. Oops. Oh, wow, you're good at deleting your old branches. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it keeps the master <laughs> clean, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Get, I am not good at deleting my old branches. I have like 50 branches of stuff that makes no sense. Uh, let's see. 
Okay. So. So we'll just reinstall, should I, here. And then. All right, so registering them here should mean that this name, the name that was on the left-hand side of the equal statement, ends up being what they what they get. Um, so um, like what that that ends up being what their name is. Um, so dffml data flow create config. Should I dot Python dependent? Okay. This one came out correctly. Let's see. The definitions are not coming out correctly. Um, let's see. Yeah, and these are all the definitions. Okay. So my guess is maybe. Um, well, no, that shouldn't make any difference because you should have had the pipeline. Let's let's run through the tutorial real quick. Um, so, Okay. Okay. So these ones, it looks like, are showing up as the correct um, names for me. So I'm wondering, maybe if you hadn't uh, had the package installed when you ran these commands, like, did you reinstall the package in development mode before running those commands? Uh, yes, I did install them. Okay. All right. Okay. So then the next thing we should check here is okay. So we probably, now this is making me also think that, um, because or else we end up with these long, long names. Um, and we want the ability for people to obviously shorten their names if they're going to go through the trouble of registering them under their entry point, right? Um, otherwise, then we give them this nice, <laughs> nice quote unquote, predefined, long, but very descriptive name. Um, so that they don't have collisions, right? But if they're registering them as entry points, they're basically saying, okay, like, I'm... I'm I'm choosing this short name for something, and if it has a collision, like so be it. Um, I chose I chose a shorter name. Um, so I'm thinking maybe what we need to do here is, um, oops. Um, let's see. Because yeah, this is I mean this is these diagrams are huge, right? Um, so we could probably shorten this down to the point of where we just say um, we could do the same thing for the for the inputs, right? And we could say um, you know uh, it, it could just be safety check. Well, I'm like trying to hold up my hand to the screen. That's not going to help anybody. Um, but basically, we could do, you know, just we could cut off this part, right, and say, okay, you registered only because they registered the operation name as safety check, right? And so instead of doing this full path, we just say, um, what's the operation name? Um, so uh, df base um, create definition. Um, so we want to grab. Or let's see. Def op. Um, oh yeah, this is where this is. So if it's already been registered as another name, so we could just grab this, and we can say def create definition. 
okay, and then that's the thing though is when we're doing the create definition, um, we're doing name list, um, and the name list is getting populated from. Uh, I think this should be an easy fix actually. So func dot qual name. So if we just do name, or wait, let's see, op name, right? So maybe we can do this as, or this is not name in kwarg, so we should just do kwargs name, right? And then now, now we're now we're actually like respecting what that um, so function module, because now it'll auto-generate the name. Right, it, it's auto-generated the long descriptive function name for us already, so therefore we can probably uh, we're probably safe if we just do this. Um, now the one thing is expect .get module. What happens if that's main? But we'll find out, right? Um, so let's see what happens now. Okay, yeah, now it shows safety check .inputs package. So that's probably more manageable there. Um, um, yeah, that's probably more manageable. Cool. Um, so this is something that we're obviously going to have to test this change. Um, but, um, well, let's just test it and see what happens. Oh, well, fuck me. Right. Oh, this is just because we're running the tests in. Should I? Let's get out of there. Those are long, 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 long tests. All right, let's see. What's the status of the CI on this guy right now? Well, like, CI is passed, I guess. In this... CI is passed. Yeah. All right, okay. It looks, it looks like this kind of throws things off. Um... Okay, well, okay, and that is why, because it's doing this, so you, yeah, okay, so we have to take that out, um, so, This be, should be a quick fix here. Name equals funk name. And module name. If module name does not equals main, then name equals module name. name. Let's try that. I think some of those tests will still blow up, but this will at least cut down our. Yeah, that one. Okay. Definition not in context. Ops echo string. That one's interesting. And this is just in the test that we were just talking about. Um, so test, test, df, test, df, create. Not in context of let's see definition not in context. So it's getting mad about that. So well let's see what definitions are there in there.
ops. Oh, okay, it's formatting everything with the colon now, which is probably the way it should be because now it's all entry point style. All right, well, that's good stuff. Um, so let's push this change. Um, is this going to break any documentation that we have? Um, did we change any documentation, Agen, when we did this, um, when this was introduced? So, can I um, did we change any document? Like, so, uh, I don't think we have changed any. Okay. Um, okay. Um, this will solve our long, 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 long um, name problem. Okay. So. Uh, what is this? What should we call this? DF base. Uh, ensure, ensure definitions. Follow entry point style for definition names. And that's probably something we needed to do anyways, um, because we had operations referenced by entry points and definitions were referenced sort of by their like doc, um, their their the way that you reference them within the docs. Um, so this is this is probably good that we do this anyways. Um, okay, and then well, let's just look at that commit. Uh, Entry point style loading operations. Okay, um, I think that got changed. Um, okay, yeah. So we support it, but we didn't update the documentation yet. Okay, great. That's perfect. Yes, you are right. Sorry, I just wanted to check. Um, and then see, this is also where. That's actually not great. What? We should have documentation so we wrote that. What? Uh, we should have updated the documentation story about that. No, that's okay. I mean, that's what we're doing with the FFmpeg example. So, it's just that's. I mean, that's that. That is what you're doing. That's what you're doing right now. So there's no worries. <laughs> um, okay. And then this is the other thing. See, this is the other thing about the commit structuring that we were talking about. Um, Sutanshu, I think you might have missed this, um, but because this was like the very first thing that we talked about. What we talked about is sort of like how we we can split apart large, um, a lot, like a lot of large code base communities do this where you, you maybe have like a really big pull request, but you'll actually like split it into smaller commits um, before you actually merge it. Um, and so this is kind of like um, a good example of, and we were talking about how this git log dash p, and then if you do dash dash, you can get a file name. So log will give you every commit. Uh, it'll just, so it's going to show every commit and what the changes for that file were uh, for that commit. And so if we go back to um, where Agen introduced these changes, where we did the entry point style load, we can look at everything that's happened um, to that file um, uh, for, for like, wh what are all the relevant things that have happened since then? So he introduced it, and it looks like he had the, the we, we were naming... Uh, we did the operation names, auto-generated, um, and then I came in and I auto-applied the decorator, um, and then I came in and I moved the, uh, I, I made it, I made this, I, I, I simplified this function so that we could simplify this this method, or that for loop there. Um, and uh, and then we did the, the names situation so all right so i think we're good to, to push this so i'm going to push this up um, and hopefully it won't break any other tests but we'll we'll know if it was me that broke all of your stuff so and if not then um we'll know um and, and if not then we can just regenerate those graphs um so okay so we talked about the regenerating so we'll need to regenerate so that they aren't such massively long names um uh, okay. So, oh, and then the other thing we're going to talk about is the channel config. Um, so, 
let's see. And actually, well, actually, I have that thing right here. So let me just regenerate that um, while we're at it. And I'll just post it up in there, and that way you don't have to like do this one. Um, so save save a few seconds while we're here, you know. Um, syntax error. Oh. Okay. Um, is this one supposed to be? Wait a minute. I don't think this one's supposed to be. Um, ah, this one's supposed to be simple, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yes, or, indeed it is simple. Okay. Oh, and then, yeah. okay, we just want to render both. Sure. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. All right, let's just, oops. Since we're here. Um, download SVG, and then I'll just throw those SVGs in an issue comment. Um, so, uh, uh, should I? And then we'll do simple. Or wait. Oh, oh. We want stage processing. Oh. It's like what are you what are you what is it on about? All right, okay, here we go. Inputs package. Wow, we really simplified. Should I? Nice job. Okay. Oh. Should I diagram processing? Yeah, I think I might have named these incorrectly, but here we go. Um. Really? Okay. So, uh, freaking. Uh, this is a trick. This is a fun trick that you can use. Um, I guess I've probably probably already discovered this, but GitHub doesn't actually validate file types. Um, so, if you're ever having issues um, uploading something to an issue, it's like I don't want to upload your file type. What? Okay. Um, then you can usually just change the extension and it'll accept yeah, it. Maybe I can like uh, generate the images and up, uh, upload them. Yeah, I guess that's probably best yeah. because it's not yeah. working. Yeah. Something something was something went really wrong. Who knows? <laughs> But that's weird. All right, yeah, I guess just regenerate them. I mean, it only takes a second. I was just trying to save you some time. Yes, I guess yes. the other thing is, um, since we're here, but so the other thing is that with the, um, um, okay, so the HTTP channel config. Um, Vim example, should I, should I deploy um, MC this? Okay, so Agen, what was the? Um, I guess we can read it from FMPEG. Um, deploy. Oops. All right, so we can do this input mode, and then we can just say. Um, um, like what is the definition? So what is this? It's uh, right, Agen. It's like JSON, and then whatever we're taking as the input. To be honest, I don't know. <laughs> I can't remember. That's okay. Um, let's see. Let's just do this. I'm pretty sure it's just the definition name. Um, oh, I guess this is why we were doing it this way was because we could do two at a time. But I don't think anyone really. Um, let's see. Should we do that? 
Right, we're doing it this way so we can do two at a time. Well, I guess we can just do safety check inputs package now. So let's just not mess with that and let's just do safety check inputs path package. Um, because it's a little bit more manageable. It's still not, not beautiful, but we'll probably, without doing a different sort of thing to the input modes um, and like making it so that it like takes a list or something, that's like, and that's, then we're just like blowing up what we're doing with input modes. And at that point, yeah, I don't know um, if we really want to be doing that. So um, let's just do it like this and just, you know, lop off this first part and we should be good there. Does that sound good? Yeah, sure, sure. All right, sweet. I think we're almost done here then. Um, yes. That should be the last of it, right? Yes, yes. All right, this is great. Um, okay, so provided I didn't break anything with that pull request, so hopefully, or that push, so hopefully that's fine. Uh, if something breaks, like I, I will try to fix it. Okay, cool. Sure. Thanks. Yeah. Um, so, is there anything else we need to talk about from anyone today? Uh, yeah, that's it from my side. Thank you. All right. And then, Sakshan, we're going to throw this guy. Or what happened here? Probably just old things that it's discovering. We're well aware they have conflicting arguments. Um, and then what else? Fixed. Okay. I was going to say, that seems like I was. I didn't read fixed and I was thinking, what is it going on about? All right, let's do it. Hello. Hello. Hey, how's it going? Uh, yeah, I just joined back. Yeah. Because my laptop was almost yeah. about to blast because I was normalizing 60,000 data <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, is that working then <laughs> yeah it's working now but it went off at 50,000 oh it went off oh no huh did do wait you ran out of battery or uh, no it just hanged it just hung oh no that's a bummer huh that's weird well I guess uh, try it again and hope for the best um, that it's working. Uh, I can see it's normalizing to between zero and one now. Nice! Wow, that's so great. That's sweet. But All right. yeah, we should write in documentation that you are not recommended to train in on your laptop if it's a potato PC. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Watch out. Well, I mean, the thing is, uh, the thing is, if it's n you not recommended to train on your laptop, if what? If it's a potato PC, if it's not high end, I mean. Oh, if it's not high end. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we'll let people take that risk. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I've I've gotten. This is something you guys will probably experience this eventually, but. Um, um, I don't know if you guys have ever run something, a compilation with make-j. Dash J says use all the cores you can, and like periodically I run this, you, you, you use all the cores you can for compilation, and Linux just hangs, and there's no way out of it. It's a mess. Um, there's, some, there's some kind of thread deadlock pro problems in Linux that still are not figured out. Well, let's merge this guy, and then I think we'll call it a day for this meeting. Um, sorry we ran over as usual. Um, but I think we covered everything, so that's good. Um, factor group. Okay. I think all of this stuff basically just ends up being the same thing that we unified the config. Um, all right, sweet. Um, all right, cool. We'll call it. We're going to merge this, and then we can. Uh, I'll. We'll call it a day here. So fixes. Um, what issue was this? Oh, mm, that's this pull request. Uh, it's T twenty five. Yes. All right. Great job. All right. Nice work, everyone. Great stuff. Um, sweet. So I will talk to you guys all on Tuesday, and have a good weekend, and good luck with your presentation, Noggin, and anybody else who's got stuff going on.
Yeah, thanks. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Hey, baby.